Well, the new year is right around the corner. Look at this massive stratospheric warming event that's gonna be happening across the North Pole heading into the first part of January. This looks like a weather pattern that will set up for a very cold start to January and then lasting through the month of January as we look at some of the longer range models. Hey guys, I'm Travis Roberts. Thanks so much for watching. I'm a former TV chief meteorologist, and if this is not the date you're watching this, make sure you hit subscribe below. It's a fairly new channel talking about weather, so that way you can get these updates. Over the next several weeks, I wouldn't dig into any of these totals and go, oh, I live here, I'm gonna get two feet of snow. Well, you know, I don't think you will, but the idea is that there will be chances of snow. Where exactly that will line up, still to be seen. And I think, as I said, the pattern will be much colder heading into January. So you're, if you're hoping for snow, your chance is going up. If not, well, you may be a little disappointed. But hey, it's winter, right? Someone put that in the comments. It's winter. It snows. Of course it does. But when it snows, that's the question. And I think that's most what most people want to know is when is it going to snow? Well, you know, anything past seven days, I think it's, yeah, you're, it's, it's a joke. But we're going to dial in for the next couple of days here at least uh, and try to get that a little more refined. This upper low, and we call it a vertically stacked low. You've got low pressure at the surface. You've got low pressure aloft. You normally don't see that. Normally that upper low is a little further to the west than the surface low. But this is really cut off from the main flow, which is way up here to the north. This thing just spinning here across the central United States as we move through the day on Wednesday. And that's going to be bringing more rain and snow showers. It's starting to weaken some. So I think the winds overall, generally in this whole area, which is a lot of the United States, will start to back down for sure. And then we're watching another system moving to the west. That's going to bring rain and snow here to Northern California, even into the Cascades and the Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon. Uh, kind of busy weather here for sure. Rain into the northeast as we move through the day Wednesday and then into Thursday, early Thursday. It looks like a wet go from New York City up to Boston. And then we'll watch northern Maine as we head into the day Thursday night and Friday for some snow as this low pressure here moves up the coast and then starts to push that moisture into some colder air here. Here's our upper low still spinning back here, mixing with a little bit of snow here into parts of the Ohio Valley, maybe even into parts of uh, Indiana, Illinois, back through Missouri. And then that all starts to shift off to the east into the Tennessee Valley once we move into Friday. And then here comes huge snow uh, across the northeast into parts of Maine, even into New Hampshire. And that snow tries to make it all the way down to the coast. So Portland, maybe a little bit of snow here. And there's that pesky low, that vertically stacked low. It starts to open up and get caught up in the upper level wave here as we move toward the weekend and get swept out to sea. But let's talk about the snow totals, because as this moves across the country, there will be some snow. I, I think it's going to have a hard time accumulating, especially here in the parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. I think it's just a little too warm at the surface. But back here across Missouri, we could see some snow, maybe a, a, an inch or two on some of the elevated surfaces. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's some locally higher amounts. Also into parts of Illinois, Indiana, and the Appalachians, I think that's where things get a little tricky. And here's one reason why. Let's flip over to the GFS. It's a little stronger with the system as it moves into the Appalachians. Last night, it was going bonkers trying to lay down just an unreasonable amount of snow uh, here across the central part of the mountains of uh, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina. I don't think that's the case. But what's interesting is this upslope flow component here on the east side of the mountains of West Virginia. Weather Prediction Center kind of upping the chances of seeing four or more inches of snow here. Definitely something to watch for sure. And that's one of the reasons that the GFS is also painting more snow here. You know, will we see a foot of snow here? You know, I think it's still too early to tell. Considering last night the model was putting out more than a foot of snow here. And then 12 hours later, you're seeing two, three inches. So, yeah, I don't know that I buy that. There's your snow across Maine. A couple of inches here. And next week, at least... Up here across Greenland, that's when we start to see some changes as this low shifts closer to the Hudson. And then we see that northwest flow start to develop here in the upper levels, even some cross polar flow as we get that stratospheric warming here around the pole, the North Pole that is. And we might even be able to tap into some of this cold air here across Siberia. If we can bring that across the North Pole into the continental United States, even to northern Canada, that gives you a better chance of yanking it down into the United States heading into January think this is a much colder pattern heading into next month so get ready winter is uh, i think going to rear its ugly head if you're not looking forward to cold weather but once we get cold i think we get stormy and uh, it's going to be a different month than december all right that's all i got for now again make sure you subscribe and get those updates have a great one